Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for being here. My name is Carrie Rad, and I'm currently doing a series called Self Care Summer. If you are new here, hello, hi, nice to meet you. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Please take this moment to make sure that you guys are subscribed to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying Self Care Summer. This episode is going to be about five ways to help you deal or cope with anxiety. I'm so excited about this video because I get tons, tons, tons of questions revolving around anxiety and I completely understand why. In this world that we live in today, there are many things that can make us feel super anxious about everything really there's so much going on every single day so i do get anxiety a lot of people think that i am always calm cool and collected and relaxed and chill and that is very true to a certain extent i seek out relaxation i seek out finding my zen on a daily basis i have to have moments like that every single day to get through the world that we live in i have had two panic attacks in my life and they were terrifying panic attacks are really scary and they make you feel like you are going to die in that moment. That's how I felt. I had never felt anything like it and I didn't know what it was. And, and now that I've been through it, I know that if it ever comes back again, I'll know what it is. But at the time I took myself to the emergency because I didn't know what was happening. I was feeling tingles in my hands. I was having trouble breathing and the doctor let me know that that's what was going on. He asked me if there was any big change happening in my life or any big decisions that I was doing. And I was making a lot of big decisions at the time. So he said, sounds like you are having and that you have been having a panic attack over this last hour or so. It like kept coming on and I didn't know what it was. Obviously panic attacks and feeling anxious are two different levels of anxiety. So I don't get panic attacks anymore. I haven't had one in the past seven years, but I do still get anxiety from time to time. So I wanna share with you guys exactly what helps me. Little disclaimer, I am not a psychologist or a therapist. I'm just sharing with you guys my advice and through my experiences, what works for me. Although I'd love to be a psychiatrist or a therapist if I wasn't doing this, but that is besides the point. Let's get into it. My first piece of advice is to recognize your thoughts. When a thought comes into your mind that gives you anxiety, recognize it, analyze it for a moment, and then do whatever you can to swing it back the other way. You'll start to notice once you start paying attention to your thoughts, which specific ones give you anxiety. So once you start realizing that, pinpoint that thought and say, okay, it's giving yourself positive self-talk pretty much and it's walking yourself through a thought. You recognize the thought and you go, okay, I have this thought all the time, it gives me anxiety. I know that this is an irrational thought. Most of the time, the things that give us anxiety are irrational because they're things that give us anxiety, but we're still living, we're still moving, we're still going on with life, so it's not something that needs to give us anxiety because it's going to be okay and we know that we'll get through this circumstance. For me, I get anxiety when I think about people that I love. If I haven't talked to them for a day or so, I am like, are they okay? I'm always feeling anxious about people's well-being. Like I think about my mom randomly and I'm like, I hope she's okay right now. Like I have these like random thoughts about people that I love and it's super irrational because my mom's fine, she's at her house. Like, but if I haven't talked to her in a couple days and I'm like, oh my gosh, is my mom okay? And then I'll call her. And then if Alex is traveling and I haven't talked to him and we're on separate time zones, then I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope he didn't get in an accident. It's just this irrational thought that I don't need to have. So it's pinpointing that and recognizing that and putting myself at ease and going, I know that this person is okay. I'm going to worst case scenario, which is irrational. So I need to let that flow out of me. My next piece of advice is to be open to getting help, to receive the help from people. And this is something that I'm going through currently that is really interesting and actually quite fascinating to me. I like the fact that I figured this out about myself and I'm doing what I can to make it better for myself and also for others in my life. 
I am the type of person that tries to handle everything on my own. And I believe the more that I analyze it and the more that I realize that I'm this way, I think it has a lot to do with me being on my own for over a decade now and just like really dealing with things on my own. Whenever something would come up, I would have to sort out a way to get it done. But I also have this irrational thought that I don't want other people to be bothered with my problems. And so I just deal with it myself, even if it's something that I'm feeling really, 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 really anxious about, I will bottle it up and not even tell people the closest to me. Even if it's something simple, like I'm making dinner and I need help and the person will ask me, can I help you with something? Can I help you with something? And I'm just like, no, I wanna do it on my own. Even if I'm having a hard time, I am just the type of person that will just be like, I can deal with this on my own. I don't wanna bother anybody with what I'm dealing with. So that is a, a recipe for disaster internally because people in your life, why are they there? Why do we have connections and relationships? We have them because we feel good having connections with people we also have them so that there's people there for us. And the people that are in our lives that love us want to be there for us. Doesn't it feel so good when you are there for someone? That's exactly how people feel for you. People that love you want to help you. Not only is it important to allow someone to help you, but it's important to reach out to people and tell them what's going on. Because if something's weighing on you, letting it off your chest and letting the people around you know what's going on is life changing. So being open to helping others, being open to other people helping you, it's a two way street and it's just such an important part of relationships in your life and for your well being. Cultivate a support system. It's a crucial part of your life and your anxiety. And cultivating people around you that might experience anxiety as well is a plus because talking to somebody who experiences the same thing, even if it's in a different way, is so incredibly helpful. Sitting down and chatting to friends who deal with anxiety as well, but in a different way, makes me feel so good because when you're feeling anxious, the worst part about that is when you feel alone in it. That's when the anxiety can get even worse. So being able to call up a friend and say, I'm feeling anxious about this. Am I being silly? Why do I feel this way? Can you help me? A friend will be there for you and say, okay, I get why you feel that way, but like, let me chat you through this so that you feel better about it because there's nothing to worry about. That's the best thing for you in a moment like that is to have somebody that you trust that you can call up that's not gonna judge you, that's gonna be there for you, that's gonna understand you, that's been through it before. And if it's somebody who doesn't experience anxiety, just a compassionate person that cares about you is a good thing and yeah, so make sure you start cultivating a support group because just socializing in general helps with anxiety because if you're just sitting on your own with it for a long time, no way, Jose, that's not gonna feel good. Go out, build some confidence, build and cultivate a group. And even if it's just a couple friends that you can reach out to from time to time, that's good too, but do whatever you can to create those relationships. Number four, Get that little booty moving. Move that tush any way that you possibly can. I will tell you this, I get the most anxiety when I haven't moved my body in a while. I have signed up tonight for a class that I didn't really wanna sign up for, but I'm going to. And I'm going to it because I know I feel good when I get out of that class. Now, there are times where I don't feel like working out, so a walk is what I decide on instead. And that's something that Alex and I like to do a lot together is we'll just take a walk, even if we're not in the mood to work out. But recently, as you guys know, I've talked about this several times, working out is a big priority to me now. And it's something that even when I don't feel like it, I make myself do it because it naturally helps with your anxiety. It naturally helps with endorphins to just make you feel good, make you feel happier, and sweating just makes you feel good. 
Like I said in one of my recent videos, the other day I was feeling super anxious and just sad and didn't want to do anything. And I went to a workout class and afterwards just everything changed. The way that you see the world changes. Get out of a workout class, you sweat, it's hard. You get past the point where you're feeling like, I can't do this. I take hard workout classes these days. And there are moments where like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't do it. But getting past that point, you feel like a stronger person. You see the world differently when you walk out of that class or when you walk out of that run or whatever it might be, you don't have to take a class, but you can do an intense workout in your living room. You can watch something on YouTube. There's so many ways to get moving and I highly, highly recommend it. And last but not least, be gentle and compassionate with yourself. Plus do all the self care your heart desires because those two go hand in hand. That is what this self-care summer has been all about. There are however many videos up for you guys right now in this series talking about self-care and why it's so important. Self-compassion, self-love, self-care, those are the keys to figuring out the puzzle of anxiety. Indulge yourself in self-care, in self-love, in self-compassion. Be nice to yourself, be gentle to yourself, treat yourself the way you would a friend. And I think that that's something that I really like to think about a lot is that if I'm feeling a certain way, how would I talk to a friend? How would I talk to you guys? I do that to myself now. I go, okay, you're feeling this way, let's get through it this way. And I now give myself the same advice that I give out to other people and I treat myself the same way that I treat my friends and, and you guys because it's important for me to give myself the same type of love. So you guys have to practice that too. Talk to yourself the way you would talk to your best friend if they were feeling anxious. This is the second to last video in Self Care Summer, which is totally insane to me. It flew by so quickly and I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did because I have loved every single minute of it. It's not goodbye yet though. You're gonna get another new video tomorrow, but I just wanted to just, I don't know, take a moment to be like, wow, it's almost done. And also to let you guys know that this is not the end of videos like this. There will be more series like this one. The one coming up that I am going to be rolling out to you guys is going to be called the Love Your Life series. It will be similar to this one in a sense where all of the videos will be revolved around the same type of vibe, but I'm going to discontinue the whole every other day essence of it because there were times this month where the every other day concept was really weighing on me and gave me anxiety if there was a specific video that I wanted to put a little bit more effort into and that I wanted to take a little bit more time on or needed to. That whole concept gave me a bit of anxiety and what we're trying to do here is not have any anxiety. So I'm going to be filming and uploading as often as I can, more than you guys are used to for sure, but the whole every other day concept will not exist anymore. That's why this time in particular, it's extremely important for you guys to turn on notifications for me and to make sure that you have it set to always because when you click on push notifications, it asks you if you want to be notified always or sometimes. So just make sure it always is clicked so that you guys are alerted anytime I post a new video. Also, before I leave, I thought I would let you guys know about a sale that is going to discontinue on the 2nd of July. I wanted to just throw this out here for you guys because it is the last chance to buy my rad t-shirts. They are the merch line that I started a couple years ago. There is a limited amount left and so I just wanted to tell you guys in these last two videos because it's the perfect timing for the sale because it's ending on the second. The shirts are only like $11.99 as opposed to I think before they were like 25 or 24. So there's a huge sale on them. They're going, they're gonna be gone. I'll never do them again. I don't think I'll ever do merch like that again. I don't know if it's my thing, but I wanted to tell you guys about it because it's like my first time ever doing merch and potentially my last and um, 
maybe it will be meaningful to all of us because it's like the one time I did merch. Do you remember that? Like that's like the OG kind of feeling. I don't know. But um, if you guys already got the shirts, thank you so much because I know so many of you guys have already gotten them and I've seen so many awesome pictures of you guys wearing them. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been so cool to see those photos. And if you want to pick one up, I will put the link in the description box for you guys if you're feeling it. And that is it for this video today. I hope that you guys liked it. I hope that it gave you some good ways to feel good and deal with the anxiety that you might be feeling. And I will see you actually tomorrow. I believe a new video will be going up. So see you soon. Bye.